الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام والأتمان الأكملان على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد The Takfir Fiasco of Lupe Fiasco Now Needless to say, I didn't even know that uh, this individual existed in the world because we just assume that, and I assume that you didn't know either until the latest fiasco because you assume that Muslims don't listen to music. Now, if you've had a past and you knew some of the uh, old school rappers, I could understand. You know, you know some of these, you know, guys from back in the day. But for you to be plugged in on uh, the current uh, rappers on the scene is a problem, my brother and sister, in and of itself. And the can of worms that was opened because of the grandiose, gigantic uh <laughs> Imam Suhaib Web. I'm, I was thinking of other adjectives, but I thought it's not going to be appropriate. So I'm just going to keep it to myself. Suhaib Web, ever since we, uh, you know, he came on back to the scene with these issues. Uh, and ever since I made the video uh, about Daniel's, you know, double standards and transgression against his, against the uh, uh, innocent Muslims. Uh, obviously... The war on Twitter, which has become probably the most maybe popular uh, platform for Dawah, maybe. Uh, I've had a bunch of back and forth with people that are calling me a Jahmi Murji because I refuse to pass takfir on Lupe. And they're saying, brother... You are out of your mind. This guy denies the existence of jinn. And he uh, makes fun of uh, paradise. And he says the Quran has been tampered, tampered with. And blah, 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 blah. They have a long list of things. Now, I was arguing based on a premise that I will prove to you from statements of the scholars and tafsir of ayat and ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi that there is a certain prerequisite, there are certain conditions that have to be met and certain preventions that have to be omitted before, before you are able to pass takfir on someone. There has to be the establishment of the hujjah. And the fahm of the hujja, the understanding of the evidence. Someone has to establish the evidence and then the, the establisher of the evidence has to be qualified and the person receiving it has to have understood it accordingly. And then after those two, those two matters are concluded and finalized and then that person insists on rejecting uh, something from the Quran or the Sunnah or whatever, then we can say not just a scholar, any layman can pass takfir on the guy. But until then, because we're dealing, <laughs> we are dealing uh, with people that are mass takfiris, like everywhere you go, the, 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 the majority of the Daniel uh, uh, followers and fans and whatever you want to call them, they're, they're wholesale takfiris. I mean, these guys are all over the place, passing takfir on every Tom, Dick and Harry, Abdullah, Rabia and, and Ahmed, and they're all over the place. So, and because Daniel did explicit takfir of him, you know, you watch Daniel's video, you know, he sees this guy, clown, uh, zindiq, uh, uh, madri ish, uh, munafiq, kafir, uh, murtad, aad, yani. these, are, these are like regular commentary. So when, when their sheikh, quote unquote, is just passing uh, uh, loose takfir on people, then his ignorant followers are going to be like, oh yeah, <laughs> so yeah, this guy also, that's why they did takfir of Umar Sulaiman and, and Yasser Qadi and Suhaib Web, they did takfir of everybody. And some of them are up, up or here making takfir of us as well. So let's, let's, let's understand the subject matter from uh, an Islamic perspective. Let's get some ilm involved 
And the ilm has to be in Arabic because as I said in today's class earlier and when we were covering the Arba'in Nawawiyah, the sixth hadith of Imam al-Nawawi about inna al-halal bayin wa inna al-haram bayin. The halal is clear, the haram is clear between them are doubtful matters that many people don't know. We mention that you can't possibly understand the intricate and the nuances of Islam if you don't know Arabic. If you're a da'i speaking in English, just be quiet and, and pack up and go open a falafel shop and leave this business alone. If you cannot understand the Arabic text and the statements of the scholars, you're just relying on someone's translation or mistranslation or his aqidah's integration into the translation, then you got a foul situation for the entire nation. Yeah, you know, we all used to be rappers, but it's a nasty business. We had to leave it alone. So I'm going to, I hope you're able to read the text even if you can. I will uh, save you the headache and read it on your behalf. I wanted to establish those things. But before I do so, I wanted to make it clear that while I was doing my homework and research, I, I went through this guy Lupe's uh, Twitter and it seems as though all of these evidences that Daniel used against him have been deleted. Unless I don't understand what's going on. I genuinely been spent, spent the last maybe hour researching and trying to find those statements that he was saying where he denied this and he denied that and I was not able to find any of them on his Twitter Allahu A'lam even finally I found one other person who quoted his tweet so when I clicked on it, it says this tweet does not exist it seems to me as though he has deleted them and that is one of the points that I actually was already trying to highlight to the people before we even got to this point. Before I even knew that I was already trying to make this argument. Before I begin, let me just give you some background. Whether this person is a revert to Islam or born Muslim as it is claimed. You do understand that the nation of Islam and the five percenters and you have all and the Ahmadis, you have all types of uh, denominations that are claimants to Islam, even though we, we have reservations about their Islam. Basically, all of them are not Muslims. All of these I mentioned are not Muslims. So we can be clear in terms of the belief. As for the takfir al-ayn, a particular individual, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to share with you today. Insha'Allah ta'ala. So be very, be very uh, careful and understand that a lot of people, whether born or come into Islam, born Muslims or come into Islam, they might think that they're upon Islam when they're not. Secondly, you have to look at a person's lifestyle. The dude is a rapper who uses foul language, whose life is about Allahu Alam what, even though there's some tweets which he says that he gave up on a lot of women and a lot of, you know, a lot of haram for the sake of Allah, Allahu Alam, Allahu Alam. But generally this person does not have anyone in his circle to guide him and advise him. Unfortunately for him, the only imam in the Muslim ummah who was available to him was a clown imam called Suhaib Webb, who himself was there at the party, shaken, you know. <laughs> Suhaib Webb was there enjoying the lyrics and he wanted you to hear the uncensored version because he's a ma'tu aslan. The guy is not all there in the first place. So do you think, and I wonder, it's very unfortunate for Lupe that someone like Suhaib Webb would be his imam because did he ever sit him down and say, listen man, you know, A, B, C, these are the Arkanul Islam, Arkanul Iman, Walla al-mawdu'a kan kullu hubbi. Walla your lyrics are beautiful. Wallahi I was shaken and baking yesterday. Sheikh, Sheikh Lupe, my Lupe, my Sheikh, oh Lupe. I love you for the sake of Allah. That's why he was he's just sitting there kissing his behind. And having a blast. Did he give him da'wah? That's all I'm trying to say. If you, if, all I'm trying to say in this video is did anybody sit down with this man and at least explain to him once the gravity of what he's saying and that those are nullifiers of Islam and then after that happened by a qualified person he chose to reject so we could say to him goodbye you have left Islam Mr. Apostate but until then we got a problem Houston and you guys Please, please fear Allah. Please 
fear Allah. Usama killed a, 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 a disbeliever. Well, even that I have a hard time saying because he, he killed a, a combatant who killed the Muslims. Usama got a hold of him and the man declared his shahada only to escape from death as per the apparent situation. Usama killed him anyways. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi told him, you killed him after he said, la ilaha illallah, what will you do with la ilaha illallah on the last day? He kept saying it to Usama. Usama said, I wished I had not embraced Islam yet. He wished, he, you have no idea. This is a, a person who was on the side of the disbelievers, fighting against the Muslims, killed Allahu Alam, how many, 10, 20, 30, got caught by a Muslim, said the shahada in order to escape and in order to save his life and the Prophet ﷺ did not let it slide because he said la ilaha illallah so when a person enters into Islam stop stop taking him out of Islam like like you're you're drinking water do some do some some tabahul relax take it easy investigate verify and by the way you're not obliged to pass takfir on him. You're not. For if you want to be safe. Unless you're involved. But not everybody has to go now. Because they say. If you don't do takfir of the kafir. Then you're a kafir. So now the whole Muslim has to go on loop. If he asks us Twitter and say. Oh by the way. You're a, I believe you're a kafir. Thank you very much. Like really? Really guys? So here we're going to discuss. The uh, sahih. من أقوال أهل العلم أنه لا يكفر أحد ممن تلبس بالشرك أو الكفر قبل بلوغ الحجة. The correct of the opinions of the scholars that no one is to have takfir passed on him of anybody that has تلبس meaning he was caught red-handed, he was caught, he was in in clothed, huh, from libas, like a garment around him. Bishirki awul kufur, whether it is uh, acts of associated partners with Allah or acts of disbelief, qabla bulugh al hujja until the proof has been received and established. Alati yakfuru tarikuha, the one, the one, the one who, if he abandons it, he becomes a kafir. وَقَدْ يَكُونُ بُلُوغُ الْحُجَّةِ بِالْبَيَانِ And it could be that the evidence is established through clarification. أو وقد يكون بالحال في المسائل الظاهرة الجلية. And it could be it's just a, a, apparent according to the matters that are apparent. But we will see the details below. ومن الأدلة التي استدل بها أهل السنة على أن التكفير وإيقاع العقوبة في الدنيا والعذاب في الآخرة لا يكون إلا بعد قيام الحجة. And from the evidences that the people of Sunnah have used to to declare that takfir Takfir and the punishment of the hereafter, uh, the, the punishment of the dunya and the torment of the hereafter are not to be established or passed or finalized or concluded until after the establishment of the proof. قوله تعالى in Surah Al Isra, number 15, وما كنا معذبين حتى نبعث رسولا. And we were never to punish anybody. We were never to punish until a messenger has been sent. The scholars understood from this all kinds of things. What about Ibn Jarir al-Tabari? He says, يقول تعالى ذكره وما كنا مهلقي قوم إلا بعد الإعذار إليهم بالرسل. We were never to punish a group or a people until after the excuse has been given and established by the sending of the messengers. وإقامة الحجة عليهم بالآيات التي تقطع عذرهم and the establishment of the proof against them with the evidences, the ayat, the signs that will leave absolutely no room for their excuse. This is in the tafsir of uh, Ibn Jarir, uh, volume 14, uh, page 5. Anyways, the references are there. وقال الشنقيطي ظاهر هذه الآية الكريمة The apparent meaning of this noble ayah أن الله جل وعلا لا يعذب أحد من خلقه لا في الدنيا ولا في الآخرة That Allah exalted in might Exalted and high above He is uh, above his creation does not, term, does not punish anybody from among his creation Neither in the dunya nor in the آخرة حتى يبعث إليه رسولا ينذره ويحذره Until he sends to him a messenger who will warn him and uh, Who will warn him basically 
فيعصي ذلك الرسول then this person has to disobey that messenger ويستمر على الكفر والمعصية بعد الإنذار والإعذار and then he persists and insists and continues upon the sin and upon, upon the kufr the disbelief and the sin after the warning and the excuse was given to him وقد أوضح جل, وع- جل وعلا هذا المعنى في آيات كثيرة الله عز وجل has explained this in multiple ayat this is an أضواء البيان ويختلف قيام الحجة بحسب الأمكنة والأزمنة This is the crux of the matter This is the crux of the matter Right here This is the matter that differentiates And this is where these people who are excited To pass takfir and call anyone who doesn't pass takfir To be a murji and a jahmi Like this al-mu'allim Or al-muta'alim this absolute nobody who's calling me a jahmi. Ya majnoon, ya ta'ban. I've been teaching the aqidah of al-wasitiyah of Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah with the Sharaf Sheikh Ibn Uthameen, rahmallah, for 15 years. And we, we, we address the jahmiyyah in detail. You're going to call me a jahmi because I'm adhering to principles that the ulama have mentioned that you probably never read or never knew or never studied. Ruh ya Sheikh. Ruh Allah yistur alayk dunya wa akhira. Ruh ya Akhi, la tatkallam Allah yistur alayk. La tatfalsaf. You want, you have a problem, come say, Akhi, listen, I don't think this is a sound opinion. This brother has done, you know, clear kufr, such and such and such. For you to sit there and tweet this, this cheesy tweet, like your cheesy name and your cheesy channel, is very cheesy. So please, don't, I don't roll like this, and don't roll with me like that. I'm, I'm telling you in the nicest way I can. Please, have some respect. You don't have to agree with me, Akhi, Barakallah Feek, but you, you, call, you calling me a jahmi is, it, it, it displays a real, uh, a high level of stupidity. I'm sorry I have to say this word. I'm sorry I have to say this word to you. The fact that you said I'm a jahmi is absolutely pathetic. Because if I were to continue re- reading all these, you will find that according to you, so is uh, Muhammad Abdul Wahab and Ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn Al-Qayyim and Shankiti and all these bashayikh. So you need, to, you, need to take a, you need to relax yourself and research the matters before you run your big, big mouth. Unless you want to join the other crowd. And this is the crust of the matter. The hujja, the establishment of the hujja varies depending on places and times. The place and the time. You have to take into consideration the modern era and how this da'wah is being given to this person. You guys do know that 80% of Twitter is trolling. 80% of Twitter is people trolling and ranting and, and uh, uh, being sarcastic, being sarcastic and f- fooling around and messing about and mocking people. Twitter is not exactly, it's a very, very toxic environment. So if you think by sending a tweet to somebody, you've actually established the hujja against them, you must be insane. Especially when you don't know the condition of the recipient, nor do you know the condition of the advisor. Some uh, majhul, his name is uh, Shibli Hibli, or I don't know, any name. I'm not uh, referring to that one person, which sounds similar. Any name. You think this is a hujja now that you send him a tweet that, you know, in the Quran it says this, and khalas, the person, you assume that you have established the hujja on him, the hujja on him. You don't know that there's variation for this? Qala ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, inna al-amkina wal-azmina allati... تفتر فيها النبوة The places and the times where the prophethood is scarce لا يكون حكم من خفيت عليه أثار النبوة حتى أنكر ما جاءت به خطأ كما يكون حكمه في الأمكنة والأزمن التي ظهرت فيها أثار النبوة So the ruling on this person where the, 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 uh, the traces of the prophethood are scarce until he denies what the what the prophethood has brought out of, you know, er- erroneously, it, we don't treat him and we don't ha- pass the same judgment on him as during the times and the places where the prophetic traces are readily available. Atharu Nubu'a, meaning the, the prophetic, uh, 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 you know, teachings are readily available. Waqala Aydan, this is in Bughiyat al Murtad. Waqala Aydan. فإن بعد معرفة ما جاء به الرسول نعلم بالضرورة أنه لم يشرع لأمته أن يدعو أحدا من أن يدعو أحدا من الأموات ولا ولا الأنبياء ولا الصالحين ولا غيرهم. We know after after uh, 
uh, after knowing what the Prophet ﷺ has brought us, we know by necessity that he did not legislate for his ummah to call on anybody from among the dead or the prophets or the righteous people or any other than that. لا بلفظ الاستغاثة ولا بغيرها Not by using the you know, term of استغاثة استغيثوا بفلان or anything other than that. ولا بلفظ الاستعادة ولا بغيرها And not by seeking refuge with you know, عبد القادر الجلاني ولا فلاني ولا علاني or other than that. كما أنه لم يشرع لأمتي السجود لميت ولا لغير ميت ولا حول ذلك Nor did he legislate for his ummah to prostrate to a dead person or to a, a not a dead person or any other than that or anything other than that or this something similar to that بل نعلم أنه نهى عن كل هذه الأمور rather we know for sure that he actually forbade all of these matters وأن ذلك من الشرك الذي حرمه الله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم and this is from the shirk that Allah and his messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم have made prohibited and forbade forbidden ولا ها لكن لغلبة الجهل وقلة العلم بآثار الرسالة في كثير من المتأخرين but because of the uh, prevalence of ignorance and the scarcity of knowledge of the آثار الرسالة the, the remnants of the message, message of the Prophet والسلام, in among those who are the, late, the later generations يعني, the not the salaf, the khalaf لم يمكن تكفيرهم بذلك حتى يتبين له ما جاء به الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم مما يخالفه. You cannot pass takfir on them until you clarify to them what has come from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم which opposes what they are upon. I hope you're starting to reason. What's coming is even more explicit. I'm only scratching the surface. To show you that my brothers and sisters, please, please do not be hasty in thinking you are Rambo or Zorro of Islam and run around passing takfir on everybody and anybody if you don't know whether the hujjah has been established. And I'm not saying that once the hujjah is established then you have to be reluctant in passing takfir. At that point, that is obligatory. But first, iqamat al-hujjah and Iqamat al-Hujjah has Thubut al-Shurut wa Antifa' al-Mawani' wa Antifa' al-Mawani' and it has conditions and times and prerequisites and occasions and circumstances and nuances and a lot of stuff that the average person on Twitter doesn't know. So why are y'all so excited? وقال أيضا في أوقات الفترات وأمكنة الفترات يثاب الرجل على ما معه من الإيمان القليل during times of scarcity of of and of uh, during times of scarcity and places of scarcity a man is rewarded with whatever little iman he may have ويغ ويغفر الله فيه لمن لم تقم الحجة عليه ما لا يغفر به لمن قامت الحجة عليه and Allah will forgive the person who does not who hasn't had anyone establish the proof against him not that which he will not forgive the one who has the is proof established against him. كما في الحديث المعروف as in the famous hadith in the hadith الصحيح it's in Ibn Majah and other places and it was authenticated by Shaykh Al-Albani عليه رحمة الله يأتي على الناس زمان لا يعرفون فيه صلاة ولا صياما ولا حجا ولا عمرة إلا الشيخ الكبير والعجوز الكبيرة the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said I believe it's a hadith of Hudayfa Ibn Al-Yaman he said they will come a time upon the people where they will not know Salah or fasting or hajj or umrah except the old man and the old lady ويقولون أدركنا آباءنا وهم يقولون لا إله إلا الله. Ah, there you go, subhanallah. And they will say we have we we uh, uh, we saw our parents, we saw our forefathers saying لا إله إلا الله. So that they just repeated. فقيل لحذيفة بن اليمان. It was said to حذيفة بن اليمان. ما تغني عنهم لا إله إلا الله. قال تنجيهم من النار. They said to him, what will لا إله إلا الله benefit them? They don't pray, they don't fast, no hajj, no umrah, no nothing. He said it will protect them from the fire. Because at that time, which is yet to come, that's all that they will have. That's all that they will have. وأصل ذلك أن المقالة المقالة التي هي كفر بالكتاب والسنة والإجماع يقال هي كفر قولا يطلق وكما دل على ذلك الدلائل الشرعية. The foundation of this statement, uh, which is that the disbelief in the kitab and the sunnah and the ijma, it is said, it is kufr. It's a statement that is issued as 
per the textual evidences. فَأَنَّ الْإِيمَانَ مِنَ الْأَحْكَامِ الْمُتَلَقَّاتِ عَنِ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Because uh, belief, you have to have belief in the rulings which you have received from Allah and His Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. لَيْسَ ذَلِكَ مِمَّا يُحَكَّمُ فِيهِ النَّاسِ يُحَكِّمُ فِيهِ النَّاسِ بِظُرُونِهِمْ وَأَهْوَاهِمْ Those are not matters which the people can use their intellect and their desires to judge about for them to intervene with those. وَلَا يَجِبُ أَنْ, يح أن يُحْكَمَ فِي كُلِّ شَخْصٍ قَالَ, بذال قال ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُ كَافِرْ حَتَّى يَثْبُتَ فِي حَقِّهِ شُرُوطِ التَّكْفِيرِ وَتَنْتَفِي مَوَانِعُهُ and it is not obligatory that you pass takfir on every person like that until concerning him the conditions have been met fi haqqihi until the establishment and the fulfillment and the application of the conditions of takfir and the uh, the absence of its preventives because you have something that must be there and something that must prevent it sometimes there's a pre a, a reason for example we have a hadith that say that whoever kills himself, whoever commits suicide, will be in Jahannam. Yet Ahl sunnah wal Jama'ah do not consider this person to be a disbeliever. He's still a believer and you still pray uh, janazah on him and you can still make dua for him. Why? Why? Answer me. How come when the hadith explicitly said that he will continue to kill himself in, in Jahannam until forever? Because there are other a hadith and other ayat that further explain this particular uh, uh, hadith. So there are shurut that have to be present and there are preventives that have to be absent before you talk about these matters. If I'm speaking a language right now that you're not familiar with, believe me, believe me, it's the first sign for you that you need to hold back from saying anything about the deen. Seriously, those are basics. And a lot of these advanced students don't even have the basics. مِثْلُ مَنْ قَالْ Such as the person who says, إِنَّ الْخَمْرَ أَوْ الْرِبَ حَلَالِ لِقُرْبِ عَهْدِهِ بِالْإِسْلَامِ A person says, alcohol is and riba are halal. Huh? Listen. Alcohol and riba are halal. Because he is a new Muslim. أَوْ لِنُشُوهِ فِي بَادِيَ بَعِيدَ Or because he was raised in a far place. أو سمع كلاما أنكره ولم يعتقد من القرآن or he heard someone say that but it didn't register in his mind and he and he didn't think it was from the Quran or nor ولا من أحاديث رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم nor did he think it's from the Hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم كما كان بعض السلف ينكر أشياء حتى حتى يثبت عنده أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال some some of the salaf used to deny something until it is proven to him beyond the shadow of doubt that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم actually said it وَكَمَا كَانَ الصَّحَابَ يَشُكُّونَ فِي أَشْيَاءَ مِثْلَ رُؤْيَةِ اللَّهِ وَغَيْرِ ذَلِكَ Just like the Sahaba used to doubt regarding seeing Allah and other matters like that until they heard that the Prophet ﷺ, because there are difference of opinion whether the Prophet ﷺ saw uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Al-Mi'raj or he didn't. So, if we were to apply this to Lupe right now, can we say that does this person really understand does he understand the implications of his statements? Does he understand what they mean? Does he understand that those are nullifiers of Islam? And after, and not you tweeting that to him, Habibi. Not you tweeting him that, that to him. This has to be done properly by a qualified person who can sit down with him and have a back and forth. Because Twitter is not really an environment for that. Limited characters and a person is doing a million things and replying to a million tweets and you're all over the place. This is, it is definitely dubious. And you would want to hold back before you reach the state of takfir based on some tweets back and forth between you and someone. Bearing in mind that he could from the beginning be trolling you. Meaning in his mind he's just trolling you to, to mess with you. He doesn't even want to take you seriously. So even when you think you've, you've established the hujjah against him, he's like, look, look at this guy, man. Get the heck out of here, dude. I got a concert in a few minutes. I ain't trying to hear you. And you're like, yo, this guy is a kafir. I just told him that, you know, you have to believe in this and he doesn't believe. See? وقال ابن القيم رحمه الله قيام الحجة يختلف باختلاف الأزمنة والأمكنة والأشخاص. Hello, ابن القيم رحمه الله. ابن القيم, one of the beauties of ابن القيم that he always, he always uh, re, not always, for the most part, he will uh, re-emphasize and reiterate what Shaykh al-Islam have said, but he will add his touch. He will add his touch, rahimahullah. So what did he add over the azmina and the amkina al-ashkhas, which is even more relevant to my discussion with you today? 
besides the fact that you have to contextualize, you have to contextualize the place and the time, but also the individuals. Believe me, a, a, a famous rapper with 1.1 million followers is not like you with 16 followers. Or me with I don't know how many followers. And I don't care. I don't care. We're not influential. You are not influential. At that scale of 1.1 million and going from this city to that city, singing on stage, and bang, man, all this hebel that they do on stage, you're, you're not influential. So you have to understand that you are worlds apart. For you to think that just because you tweeted something and you become significant, you, in his world, you're still insignificant. That's just the way it is. These people live a grimy lifestyle. Filthy language, women, uh, uh, alcohol, uh, smoking weed all day. Allahu alam what else. I'm not saying that Lupe does that. I don't know anything. About, I don't even know anything about this guy. Nothing about this guy. The only time I've ever heard him say a word is when he said that he uh, doesn't believe in, in jinn. Which is a statement of kufr, no doubt. A statement of kufr, no doubt. All I'm saying is, just because you make a statement of kufr does not make you a kafir. They are exceptions. They are excuses that have to be given. Just like the person who lost his uh, mount and he found it, then he, out of joy, he said, Oh Allah, uh, Allahumma, anta abdi wa ana rabbuk. Oh Allah, you are my slave and I am Lord. This is a statement of kufr. But he said it out of happiness. So there are excuses in Islam. Or the man who t said to his children that after I die, you know, burn me. And scatter my, my, my ashes everywhere. Because if Allah were to get a hold of me, then I, I, I would be punished severely. Allah Azza wa Jal brought him back and told him, what made you say this? said, out of fear of you, Allah Azza wa Jal forgave him. This person denied resurrection. Denied Allah's qudra and quwa to bring him back. So look, there are nuances in Islam. All I'm saying is trying to protect me and you from being takfir is because takfir, takfir is the latest trend. Takfir is the latest trend. People are running around passing judgment of excommunicating people outside of Islam and having multitude of apost apostates all over the place. And Adi, Adi, he says this and then he drinks some water. Kafir, clown, zindiq. Astaghfirullah al azim. Ashkhas. فَقَدْ تَكُومُ حُجَّةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكُفَّارِ فِي زَمَانِ دُونَ زَمَانِ The proof and the establishment of Allah may be, may be uh, no, the proof of Allah may be established against the kuffar during certain times and not during other times. وَفِي بُقْعَةٍ وَنَحْيَةٍ دُونَ أُخْرَى Or in one area, one location and not another one. كَمَا أَنَّهَا تَكُومُ عَلَى شَخْصٍ دُونَ أَخَرْ Or it could be established against one person but not another. They're not the same. إِمَّا لِعَدَمِ عَقْلِهِ وَتَمِيزِهِ Either because he doesn't have the intellectual capability or he does not make a distinction. He doesn't have the discretion. كَالصَّغِيرِ وَالْمَجْنُونَ An example would be like a crazy person or a young man, someone who's underage. Male or female. But the person could be insane. Yeah, these guys could be high when they're tweeting. Wallah al he could be drunk off his behind and high as heck when he's sitting there tweeting back and forth and rejecting everything in the Quran and Sunnah. How do you know? How do you know his state of mind? This, by the way, is a majnoon. He is considered a majnoon hatta yafiq. Until, like, a, like sara, until he returns to his sanity. Or like a drunkard, until he returns to his sanity. Or either because of his lack of understanding, because he's not understanding the speech that is being said to him. There was no translator translating to him. This is equal to a deaf person who cannot hear anything nor understand. So I'm not saying this particularly applies because you're going to say, well, we're speaking to him in English. Yes, but the barrier here is not a language barrier. It is not a linguistic barrier. It's a barrier of, of who are you and who is he and where, what state is he in and how much he's going to understand from a tweet. A tweet, ya Ustad, a tweet, ya Baba, a tweet, ya Ammo, a tweet, ya Khalo, a tweet, ya Hajj. You're going to be doing Iqamat al-Hujjah wa thubut al-Shurut wa indifa' al-Mawani' with a tweet. Wa min aqwal al-Ulama fi adami takfiri al-Jahil qabla qiyam al-Hujjah alayhi ma yali. And from among the statements of the scholars, in the uh, not passing takfir on the ignorant person until the proof has been established, is the following also. Qala ibn Taymiyyah. ليس لأحد أن يكفر أحد من المسلمين وإن أخطأ وغلط. It is not for anybody 
to pass takfir on any one of the Muslims, even if he were to err and make a mistake. حَتَّى تُقَامَ عَلَيْهِ الْحُجَّةِ Until the proof is established against him. وَتُبَيَّنُ لَهُ الْمَحَجَّةِ And the, the, the evidence has to be clarified to him. From tabyin and tibyan, there has to be proper Quran mubin, meaning clear and straightforward, not some some jungle bungo mungo from the sango coming here and saying anything on Twitter. We need someone to go sit with this man and say the only person who sat with him is one of the biggest zanadiqa. That one you can call zandik Abu Layth because Abu Layth is a, is a is a supposed learned man, a person who claims to be a Maliki and literally mocks Islam from the beginning of his life or from the beginning of a session until the end. This is a person where we could say, okay, where are these shurut and mawani? He knows. He supposedly knows the Arabic language. He supposedly knows. He's he sat with people. And even then, I would still be safe and say, maybe, maybe his circle of people is a bunch of retards who don't know any better. But you see how you're going to make that distinction between the ashkhas? I would really hold back from all of them, by the way. Even though you, you have to make that distinction between the two. One is a claimant of ilm. His whole thing is about knowledge. He has books behind him and he talks about Islam and he denies this and he denies that. Ah, the majnu, that's heresy. That's a her heretical belief. This guy is a, as a rapper. He's a freaking rapper. He's a rapper. So whoever is clarifying to him must sit down with him and say, listen man, and he has to speak his language. He doesn't have to speak ghetto, but he has to speak his language. He has to explain to him in a language that he understands what's going on. He claims that he studied the Old Testament, New Testament. Someone should speak to him in that language, i.e. in a way that he will understand. So we could say this applies. وَمَنْ ثَبَتَ إِسْلَامُهُ بِيَقِينٍ Whoever's Islam is confirmed and affirmed via certainty, لَمْ يُزَلْ ذَلِكَ عَنْهُ بِالشَّكْ It is not allowed to remove that certainty of Islam from him with doubt. بَلْ لَا يَزُولُ إِلَّا بَعْدَ إِقَامَةِ الْحُجَّةِ وَإِزَالَةِ شُبَّةِ Rather, it cannot be removed, Islam cannot be removed from him until after the establishment of the proof and the removal of the doubt. Whatever doubt that person has, has to be removed. Meaning you tell him, look, Denying jinn uh, is an act of disbelief. He's going to tell you why. I don't believe in superstitious beliefs. You say, listen, Akhi, Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ وَالْجَانَّ خَلَقْنَاهُمْ إِلَىٰ أَخِرِي The surah in Surah Al-Rahman. Uh, you, you, you show him Surah Al-Jinn. مِنَ الْجِنَّةِ وَالنَّاسِ Surah Al-Nas. And whatever ayat you show him, from the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ and this, and the person is able to go back and forth, this doubt that he has in his mind has to be removed. When you show him clear-cut evidence and that he, the doubt is not removed, not because of your inability, but because of his stubbornness, then to hell with him. Then takfir has now become uh, uh, allowed. Until then, you have to take a chill pill. Uh, let me skip that. Nah, because it's redundant. Muhammad Abdul Wahab rahimahullah, because some, I don't want to just quote Ibn Taymiyyah, so you think this is Ibn Taymiyyah's opinion. As for the lies and the slanders that were made against him, uh, such as them saying, such as them saying, that we pass mass takfir. This is now, this is a message to uh, Muhammad Hijab and Daniel and Yasir Qadi and all these people that, that uh, and Brother Haji who are on, on, on a non-stop war against Muhammad Abdul Wahab and claiming that he was this and he was that. You know, subhanallah al-azim. Subhanallah al-azim. People sometimes don't fear Allah in these matters. They may be God-fearing people in their salah and siyam, but when it comes to these matters, they are definitely reckless. That's the least we could say. He said, as for this statement that, nukafir bil we do this wholesale takfir. وَنُوجِبُ الْهِجْرَةَ إِلَيْنَا عَلَى مَنْ قَدِرَ عَلَى And that we make it obligatory that people migrate to us for the one who's able to show and you know live his religion. And that we pass takfir on the one who doesn't pass takfir on that person. And that we pass takfir on the one who did not fight. And things similar to that and multiplied. Even things multiplied more and more. More exaggerations and more slanders and lies. All of this is from lies and slanders. 
which they use in order to hinder people from the deen of Allah and his messenger sallallahu if we don't pass takfir on the one who worships the idol that is on Abdul Qadir or the idol which is on the grave of Ahmad al-Badawi and, and their likes because of their ignorance and the absence of anyone who can clarify to them and notify them so how in the world and how would we then do takfir on the one who has not associated upon us with Allah because he simply did not migrate to us or because he didn't uh, do takfir of the one that we made takfir of or he, he didn't fight with us that's the shaykh statement so if he's not even doing takfir of people that are worshipping idols because this is what they were brought up upon then how are we going to do takfir on the other things subhanaka hadha buhtanun azim this is in Minhaj al Ta'seez, and it was quoted by a number of the scholars. Also, قال سليمان بن سحمان لا تقوم الحجة إلا بمن يحسن إقامتها. Huh? I told you, I'm, I was scratching the surface. Now we go into into the more intricate matters. The حجة cannot be established until it is done by the one who is able and capable and qualified and has the credentials and the ability to establish it. As for the one who is, is unqualified, who is unable, who is not fit for establishing the proof, like the ignorant person who doesn't know the rulings of his own religion, nor does he know what the scholars have said about the subject matter, then the hujjah is not considered to have been established as far as I know and Allah knows best. Also in the fatawa of Lajna Daima, in the second volume, 147 page or fatwa number 147. It says, the, the ruling on the person, whether he is excused for ignorance in the religious matters or not, is dependent and also uh, proportional to the variation in the delivery on the balagh, the delivery of the message, yani the proof, or the absence of that. And also with the variation of the subject matter itself in terms of clarity or being a little ambiguous. And the variation in the comprehension of the people in terms of strength and weakness. Meaning some people have strong comprehension skills. Some people are just not fit for this religious matter. He only knows how to, how to rhyme words. His only skill in, in life is to rhyme words. You ask him anything, you tell him, hey, what's six times six? He will tell you 59. You do know that there's some of these rich, super rich, famous people don't know anything about this dunya except whatever made them famous. Except whatever made them celebrities and rich. If it's music, it's music. They don't know they don't, nothing, nothing else in this world. So this guy may not even be fit for these religious discussions, or he may be. Maybe he, maybe he came from another background. You don't know. We, we don't know. That's the whole thing that we're trying to establish. قال ابن عثيمين رحمه الله الجهل الجهل بال بالمكفر على نوعين بالمكفر عفوا على نوعين should be بالمكفر صح anyways ignorance for for the one who's uh, in a state of disbelief or the one whose takfir has been done on him is of two types الأول أن يكون من شخص يدين بغير الإسلام first of all that this person follows a religion other than Islam النوع الثاني the second type أن يكون من شخص يدين بالإسلام ولكنه عاش على هذا المكفر uh -huh, yes المكفر meaning the, the things which will nullify your Islam or the other one is that a person uh, he belongs to Islam but he has lived he has lived his whole life upon something that is actually a nullifier of Islam ولم يكن يخطر بباله أنه مخالف Islam it never crosses his mind that he's actually negating Islam he doesn't know that this is kufr he might know that this is something that is not right haram uh, disliked whatever he doesn't know that it's actually kufr ولا نبه أحد على ذلك no one notified him we apply the apparent rulings of Islam, meaning we treat him as a Muslim outwardly for now. As for the Akhirah, his affairs with Allah. 
وقد دل على ذلك الكتاب والسنة وأقوال أهل العلم. And this has been indicated by the Quran and the Sunnah and the statements of the people of the people of knowledge. This is a majmu' fatwa Sheikh Ibn Uthami rahimahullah. So my brothers, is it clear now that all I'm saying, all I'm saying again, is we need to be careful and take it easy. So I'm going to summarize. I'm going to summarize bullet points and then we call it a day, inshallah. Number one. التكفير من أخطر وأدق المسائل التي يجب على من نصح نفسه أن يبتعد عنها ويكل أمرها إلى أهل العلم الراسخين. تكفير is one of the most dangerous and the most intricate matters that makes it obligatory on the one who is sincere to himself that he stays away from it and he leaves it to those people of knowledge who are firm in knowledge. Not even me and you. روح يا شيخ. Not even me and you. العلماء الراسخين بالعلم. The علماء that are well grounded in knowledge. Not some miskin from Twitter. Second, التكفير لا يكون إلا بأمر ظاهر جلي أوضح من الشمس في رابعة النهار. The التكفير cannot be except تكفير only occurs with a matter that is ظاهر, clear, جلي, apparent, even more clear and apparent than the sun in the middle of the day. Three, التكفير مزلق وقع بسببه كثير من الجهل وأنصاف المتعلمين حين خاضوا فيه. It should be فيه وذا. تكفير is a slippery slope that has caused many ignorant and half learned people to fall off basically because of them engaging in it. سبحان الله. Fourth, التكفير تبني تبني عليه أحكام دنيوية وأخروية كثيرة. حرج للغاية فلا يظن مطلقه أن أمره ينتهي بإطلاقه تكفير necessitates implicates تكفير implies a lot of rulings wordly and of the hereafter in the dunya this guy is an apostate if he's in a Muslim if he's in a Muslim country they could you know they could if the if the people in charge get a hold of him they can they actually execute him. And his uh, marriage becomes nullified if he's married to a Muslim and his child. I mean, yo, so many things, so many things are a byproduct of this takfir. And, and the akhirah also, basically you're saying he's going to be in Jahannam forever. These are very, very delicate matters. So don't think that you, by passing takfir, khalas, you did it and the matter is done. You're actually issuing a fatwa, ya majnoon. You're issuing a fatwa that has implications. And if someone were to grab you, say, ta'al hina, ya sheikh, ta'al hina, anta ya mufti Twitter. تعال يا بابا سلامات سلامات ايش بك ايش قاعد تقول انت شو عم بتقول تقبرني يعني شو بدك يمسكك من منين يعني لك سكوت لك خليك ساكت ارحام البشريه وارحام الجن يا اخي ارحام الجن اللي هو م... على كلامه ما بيؤمن فيه ما بيؤمن فيهم لك ارحمنا با they are implications for this انت you just pass in takfir like you were eating chips fifthly أهم ضوابط التكفير الاحتياط في تكفير المعين وأن لا يحكم إلا بالظاهر you have to be one of the prerequisites or the etiquettes or the aspects of takfir is that you are very wary in doing takfir of the شخص معين or معين the person that is being identified you عبد الله أبو أحمد ربيعة you not not مطلق no a particular person like you say, عين الشخص, that, that, that person himself. The عين is the, the very thing itself. And that you don't uh, judge except with, by the apparent. Sixthly, أجمع العلماء على وجوب قيام الحجة. الله أكبر. The scholars have unanimously agreed that you must establish the proof because of the ayah. وما كنا معذبين حتى نبعث رسولا. Seventhly, الجهل الذي يعذر صاحبه به يختلف باختلاف الأزمنة والأمكن والأفراد ويختلف باختلاف الأمر المكفر الذي وقع فيه. Ignorance uh, for the person engaging in kufr varies with the variation of times and places and individuals. And it also varies. In terms of the, what is it that this person is, has fallen into? The, the actual nullifier of Islam itself. Eighthly, hadith al-ahadi bil-Islam. A person who is new to Islam. وَمَنْ عَاشَ فِي بَادِيَةٍ بَعِيدًا عَنِ الْعِلْمِ وَعُلَمَاءِ Or a person who lived far away in a place far from knowledge and scholars. Probably like this Lupe guy. You think he's sitting there with scholars. Is the only scholar he has, as far as we know, in the circle is Suhaib Webb. And we've already established that, <laughs> that he's too busy. You know, we're assuming. We're assuming. We're assuming. 
Because I'm guessing, the reason why I make an assumption that Suhaib did not speak to him, because you would think, one of two things. Either Suhaib spoke to him, and then he rejected him, then Suhaib is really cheating all of us. Because I'm basing this on the Zahir. You would assume that Suhaib advised him. If he advised him, he would have retracted. If he still negated Suhaib after the clarification, and still made statements of takfir, then how in the world is Suhaib still defending him? And if he never spoke to him, then it proves the point that the guy probably didn't know because the guy in the circle is not exactly fit for the job. Uh, ninthly, Allah Akbar. Ya Allah, ma ahla al -ilm wal -ulama. Ya akhi, why are the people so stubborn? I don't understand. Rabbi Al-Kaaba. Rabbi Al-Kaaba, I don't understand. The, the proof and the, the, the evidence varies from a country to another, from time to another, from an individual to another, depending on the ignorance and depending on the presence of the person who's delivering, who's doing the clarification of the hujja. Tenthly, الفهم يكون فيه دلالة ويكون فيه ويكون فهم هداية هداية التوفيق. Ex explaining something, understanding is of two parts. Either someone just telling you, giving you the indication, you know, like this is the way, this is the evidence. And there's an aspect of it that has the, the success that is given from Allah as in guidance. So whoever understands the, the former, he just understood the evidence. He understood the meaning of the evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah. Then we could say that the proof has been established upon him. واتضحت له المحجة and then the evidence has been clarified for him ولا يلزم أن يفهم فهم التوفيق it does not mean that he understands now he has that understanding of guidance from Allah where he actually applies uh, 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 you know whatever he has understood from the Quran and the Sunnah فإن فهم التوفيق هبة من الله تعالى يعطيها من يشاء من عباده ولا يظلم ربك أحدا because this understanding is a gift from Allah عز وجل he gives, he gives it to whomever he wills of his slaves and your Lord does not oppress uh, does not oppress anybody so I'm going to close this and uh, I'm going to go back to the streaming solo mode and I'm going to finalize this talk because it is uh, around an hour and I didn't want to make it long. I just want to uh, once again um, highlight this matter. My brothers and sisters, a sincere advice from someone who loves you for the sake of Allah, no matter how nasty you are to me, please protect yourself from the torment of the uh, fire by not passing takfir on your fellow Muslims. You are, I'm, I'm, I didn't quote certain ahadith and ayat because I'm under the impression that all of you know. You know that if you call your, your brother a kafir or a munafiq, it's going to fall back on one of you. So please understand the gravity of the matter. I am not a murji. I am not a person who does not believe that uh, Iman uh, you know, is, is something that is not uh, untouchable. It does not go away. I believe in, in kufr and I believe in, in takfir and I believe that people can leave Islam. That people can enter Islam from one door and exit from the other door. I believe in all of that. All I'm saying is that we need to be more careful and more considerate and more intellectual and more knowledgeable when we approach this matter so that we don't wind up transgressing. And for you, the average layman, you just mind your business and keep moving. Play it safe. So I'm addressing two types of people. The, the, uh, the, knowledge, the people that are knowledgeable or think they're knowledgeable or claim to be knowledgeable. Y'all need to understand that you cannot be transgressing like this and, and the people are going to follow you. That's why you have to be very careful when you pass takfir on someone. Very careful because the people will, will retweet and quote tweet and, and, and repeat what you have said and spread it all over the world because of the way the social media works today. So protect yourself from being uh, heedless and reckless in this matter. For the laymen and the laywomen, please leave that for the people of knowledge and you know have your peace of mind. I'm not telling you, you say, no, no, I don't pass takfir on anybody even if you see kufr and the, uh, the, the shurut have been met. And the mawani have been, uh, uh, the preventives have been, uh, uh, you know, eliminated. Then you say, no, I'm still going to pass takfir. We say, no, you, you cannot. You cannot. If someone does kufr, you have to acknowledge the kufr that they have done. Just take it easy. There were other things that I wanted to mention in the other video that I forgot. And maybe I was thinking of squeezing them in right now. But inshallah, maybe we'll leave them for another day. Uh, please share this video with other people. And... Uh, uh, do join our weekly classes, uh, class in Tafsir and the class in Arba'in Nawawiyah with the Sharh of Sheikh bin Uthaymeen for the Nawawi and Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Nasir al-Sa'adi in the Tafsir. Uh, 
uh, every Friday and Saturday, 1.30 p.m. Mecca time, live session where we cover the Arabic and the English and we have a, a usually a fun Q&A session at the end of the class. هذا والله أعلم وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته